All right, starting live here. Decided to go a little earlier before I hit Instagram and go live. To talk to y'all, wait for some people to join. Hey Jess, always right on time. Let me go live on Instagram. Started right at eight o'clock. You know, Instagram likes to time me and only give me like an hour. So I've got to, hey lady, how are you? Over here, just listening to the Waiting to Exhale soundtrack. Hey Bridget, welcome. Just waiting for some people to come live. Um, for those of y'all that joined us or did not know what we were reading in July, we read Waiting to Exhale by Terry McMillan. Um, so I'm super excited to discuss this with y'all. It was, and I'm about to turn this music off. The soundtrack is great, but it's distracting me. <laughs> so it's got to go for right now. Um, oops, look, hit my camera all, okay. Um, I love this book. And welcome to everybody that's joining us on Instagram. Y'all know I'm doing both at the, the same time. Yes, yeah, still devastated. Um, it was a tough one. It, that was, Tony was a, a tough loss for me today. Um, what was weird is that I went on a walk with coworkers um, just before. And I just was feeling kind of down, like my spirit. I just, the vibe, something wasn't right when we were walking. And I get back from our walk and I sit down at my desk and I let, check my Facebook notifications and someone tagged me in something that said Toni Morrison had passed. So um, yeah, devastated is exactly how I feel. I feel like my heart is completely shattered. Um, you know, I I pay tribute to all of the greats on here and I I... You know, Tony is no exception. She is, you know, the, the ladies that you guys see from time to time up here are what defines book girl magic. Um, you know, black women authors, and I'm trying not to get teary eyed as you guys can see, but um, Toni Morrison is just that big of an impact for so many of us. And someone asked on, um, on Instagram what my favorite Toni Morrison book is. I've actually only read one of Toni Morrison's um, books and that would be The Bluest Eye. Um, as y'all know, my reading journey is still kind of new so I'm, I'm digging into to all types of reads. Um, but I did a podcast with The Stacks Pod last October. Um, so you can go to the Stacks Pod and catch that. And we actually discussed The Bluest Eye. So that was Tracy and I's first time reading Toni Morrison. And we absolutely fell in love with her. Um, Shoshana, hi. Um, so yeah, it, it's now I'm going to ramp up because I've been slacking on my Toni Morrison reads. But everybody talks about Sula. And so that'll be next on the list. I'm going to go in order um, and begin that. I already have stuff lined up for August. But starting in September, I will be getting on track with that um just I mean she's imagine that I've only read one book one of her works um although I've you know watched documentaries and, and followed her and researched her a lot um I can only imagine what others feel um and how they're impacted by her you know that have been able to read more of her books and spent time with her so I'm I'm really hurting for a lot of us although she did live a long good life um yeah to the news of of tony morrison passing today was extremely devastating so um i know we all share in that yes the blue side was a great read yes very heartfelt um you know she kind of reminds me of zora just not you know breaking boundaries and breaking barriers um with her writing and just not really giving a damn what people think she's gonna write what she wants to write so I, I really, truly appreciate that about her. Um, yeah, I'm just so sad about it. So it was a shock. I was at work almost in tears. Yeah, there's many times that I cried today and just talking with other people and it just, we're all just shattered. Like, it's amazing how much someone you don't even know um, can impact your life like that, especially, you know, us as in the reading community. 
how it bonds us together. It's just, it's amazing how I've watched this community just pour out their love. It's incredible to see. Um, we didn't deserve her. I mean, her work was just absolutely incredible, but I was happy to see how the community came together in, in support and, and to, uh, you know, um, give praise to her. So anyways, I'm rambling. I know um, I would love to talk about Toni Morrison all day long as she deserves such, but we are really here to talk about Waiting to Exhale by Terry McMillan. So um, so let me tell y'all a funny story before <laughs> I get deep into this. Um, and go ahead and, and if you guys have read it, go ahead and comment your thoughts. Um, we'd love to hear what you thought about the book. And so two weeks ago, I, I like to read my books towards the end of the month so that's closer to our chat. And so that I know, you know, it's fresh on the mind when I'm discussing because I do tend to read a lot and sometimes books get confusing or I forget details and things like that. Um, now, Waiting to Exhale is probably one of my favorite, one of my favorite movies. Um, so I'd always watch the movie, can, you know, uh, rehearse lines from it. I can, you know, remember, I have it memorized like that's how much I love the movie, but had never read the book. So that's why I kind of made it a mission to make it a book club read so that we could read it and discuss it together. So, and I see my piece of happy, happy, uh, Jamie, you commented on what I'm about to say. So I sat down because usually a lot of my books, I like to do audio book um, and listen to it in the car on my commute to work. And so I sit down and I, um, it's like Sunday night and I'm trying to get my stuff together. I want to get the, the audio book prep so that when I get in the car or when I go to exercise, like it's ready to go and all I have to do is hit start, right? So I go ahead and look at the audio book and I'm like, this is only three hours long, but I'm like, this book is like 400 pages. There's no way that this audio book is only three hours long. Like something's not right, right? So I crack open the book, put the headphones in and I start listening to it. And it's like just skipping, like it's basically skimming through bits and pieces of what's happening. And what I'm realizing is I think the audio is a play off of the movie because it's only three hours long. So I, when I realized that I was like, oh crap, like I can't listen to this. I've got to read it um, because otherwise I'm not, I'm, I'm going to miss some, you know, key details and things like that. So I'm glad that I decided to, you know, look at this two weeks before... <laughs> We had this chat, um, but yeah, so if you ever listen to the audio, it's like three hours long and it's more so like the movie version than it is the actual book. So that was interesting. Uh Oh, Jessica, did, did you do the movie? I mean, the audio version? <laughs> yeah, Jamie said, unfortunately, listened to the audio and then found out too late that it was not the same as the book. Yep, because someone else had commented that in the group that they listened to the audio and I was like, was it only three hours long? And she was like, yeah. And I said, yeah, it's not the same as the book. So um yeah, it was very interesting. Oh, she said, no, I read the book, but I would have been upset. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine like three hours long? Like I was like, there's no way. I'm glad I had a physical copy and I also had the ebook. So the ebook really helped me get through it. Um, let's see. When Waiting to Exhale came out in the 90s, everywhere you went in the train, the hairdresser, every black woman I knew was reading it or had the book. That's crazy. They should not be selling <laughs> that it's fraudulent yeah it's very deceiving um so i absolutely love the book i felt like and go ahead and comment your thoughts of what you thought of the book maybe even what you rated it um whether or not this was your first time reading it if it was a reread for you um i went ahead and watched the movie again for the trillionth time um this past weekend just so I could have a refresher and kind of I could really do a comparison of the book versus the movie now that I had actually read the book um what's amazing to me is I really pay attention because in my mind you know I've already seen the movie so the characters as I'm reading them that's who I'm picturing it as Angela Bassett Layla Rashawn you know Whitney Houston um who am I thinking um Loretta Anyways, um, so in my head, or head, that's who I'm thinking, picturing as these characters. But some of the characters that they're describing do not look like what they are in the book. So, like, if you remember um, Robin's character, you know, Michael is a light-skinned guy with freckles and stuff like that. And, and um, he's not that in the movie. Um, Let's see. Jessica said, my mom saw me reading it and was shocked that I hadn't. I had to remind her how old I was. 
when it came out and that there were there was no way she would have let me read it yeah see that's I go back and forth with that with people a lot and the things that they read in middle school because I was like there's no way that I should have been reading that in middle school um but yeah and when did this this came out in like I think the movie came out in 1992 but the actual book I think was like 89 90 so I would have been in kindergarten I know I'm telling my age right now but I would have been in kindergarten <laughs> when this book came out so yeah it, and you know um I know a lot of people like to be like, you didn't read that? No, because I was like in pre-K when that happened. So um, that's why. Loretta Divine, thank you. I couldn't think of her last name. Robin's character, I completely agree, was not represented well in the movie. I agree. I felt like, what's the word I want to use? Robin was a little more loose in the book than she was portrayed in the movie. Because I was like man she's kind of out there with you know all these guys that she's dating and what she's doing and she's a little more naive in the book than she is in the movie because there's a lot of times that I just wanted to like shake her and and like wake up Robin like this guy is playing you like straight up I, I don't understand why you can't see what's going on um with Troy um God, what is his name? Um, Leon's character. My, my mind is going blank right now. Um, but yeah, it just, it wasn't a good look for Robin in the, in the book. She, Russell, I, can, I couldn't think of his name, Russell. Um, yeah, she, she was portrayed to be something a little different than what she was. Um, Whitney Houston in making her trip to Arizona and riding with I'm forgetting all these characters names um but when she was riding with the guy he was helping her move like I wish they would have showed more of that in the movie because there was so much more to that scene of her riding in the car this guy I mean they kind of skimmed over it you know her giving him $20 for gas and he only it cost $7 and he doesn't bring back her change and like them staying in the hotel, there was just so much more awkwardness and buildup of this guy that I wish they would have shown that more in the movie. Yeah, she was struggling with her finances and taking care of her mother. And that's true too. I don't I don't think that they really um talk much about that, like as much about her family situation for Robin. I know she takes visits and goes back to visit her parents and stuff like that, but I don't think that they showed the depth of everything that she was going through. Yeah, see my girl Essence, she's the one who I broke it to about the audiobook, that none of that was in there. And I think it's because what what was on audio was more so like the movie. It just kind of skimmed over the stuff, but Robin was quite the character. Um, and I think, you know, you got a little more detail on Troy and who he was and his family and, and him being a drug addict. Um, you know, it, it was it was a lot going on. Um, I My favorite character of all of them is always going to be Bernadine. Um you know, and I can closely relate to her as someone who is divorced. Man, I just remember like putting that gif on my on my Instagram um, back in the day and nobody really understanding that I was going through what she was going through. But it was like that movie. It's just so empowering to watch some of these women go through what they went through and um, to see Bernadine kind of build herself back up after divorce. And, you know, um, it goes into more detail with her court battle. But, you know, that John was trying to, like, do all of these things to Bernadine to, like, he sold his portion of the company for, like, way less than what it was worth just so that when he divorced her, she couldn't get what was owed to her. Um, and so she hired private investigators and all these things to research him and his finances and see, like, what you know, see what they could dig up to see if there's some missing pieces. You know, he owned restaurants that he put in his mom's name, like just crazy stuff that he did to get over on her and, you know, told her not to, um, told her not to like open her catering company until he got himself 
established. Yeah, John was complete trash. Like, you know, Bernadine was she was better than me. I but you know, I you know that scene where she burnt up everything. I can <laughs> completely understand why. It's like even then, like you know, she got the house. He was supposed to be paying the the mortgage on the house while they were going to court back and forth and he wouldn't pay it. So it was just, it was a lot going on in that. I wanted to chop him in the throat. It, he was complete trash. Um, but then one of my other favorite uh, scenes, especially in the book was when she had that garage sale and sold all of his stuff for a dollar, even his, his like antique car collectible. Only in fiction because in real life forensic accounting is a fortune yeah i can imagine i can imagine so yeah it was it was extremely well i shouldn't say extremely but it was there was a lot of differences between the book and the movie um so i was shocked at a lot of the things that you know in the description of some of the characters um Tyreek and Gloria, that was another duo that was interesting. Um, you know, being being super protective mom of Tyreek and he's just mischievous and getting into trouble and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, but, you know, that's a struggle as a single mom trying to keep it together. But Gloria's still trying to chase after her ex and he wants no parts of her. Oh, wow. It says another letdown was the yard sale. The audiobook didn't even have her torching the car. Yeah, that was a huge part. Like, her gathering all the clothes and then, you know, the same thing. Like, I'm picturing the movie as it's happening and then the cops or the firefighters coming up to her door and, you know, saying, you know, you're not supposed to be burning anything unless it's trash. And she's like, you know, smoking a cigarette as calm as ever. And she's like, it is trash, you know? <laughs> I love her character is my favorite. It it always will be. I mean, Angela Le Bassett is just she's something. Like she's just phenomenal. I love her. Um, the hair chopping. Although I in the movie Gloria cuts her hair, and in the in the book, one of Gloria's I wouldn't say assistant, but another person that works there, one of her employees, cut Bernadine's hair. I don't even know if Gloria was there when it happened, so that was interesting. And see, it was great to see how the book showed how people change as different situations arise, both for good and bad. Yeah, they definitely went through it. Um, I think for me, what was cool about reading this book is how much it still, re even though it was written in 8990, I can't remember which one, but how relatable it was today to today's dating world, like it man there was just so many things that happened that i was like i it's still the same like it baffles me that men were that way in those times and the games and things still exist today like it just it's hard it's actually disheartening that we're still in the same place many 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 years later um that dating is still this much of a struggle and women in their 30s like I mean I could relate to this book forwards and backwards um through each character there was something about them and their dating struggle and you know glory for Gloria she was kind of scared to go with the unfamiliar you know she wanted to mess around with her ex and you know until he told her that he was gay um but you know she was scared to just kind of branch out and try something new with this new neighbor and couldn't believe, you know, there was a lot of insecurities and she couldn't believe that um, someone would actually like her. Cause you know, they, they actually in the movie, they, they clown a lot on her weight too. I really, I didn't like that. Um, they, they talked about Gloria's weight, like in jokingly ways, but still like with some truth behind it. And I was like, Wow, like, because they don't really do that in the movie. But, yeah, I was taken aback about how much they kind of toyed with Gloria's weight. But 
um, you know, she was so used to the familiar, familiar and, you know, was kind of in shock that someone would like her weight and all like, you know, he's like, I like some meat on my bones and kind of thing. Um, I got to keep moving forward because my white letters on my shirt, I can't see the red. The book had such great characters who were like a slice of all of us. I agree. And it really showed sisterhood as it should be. I totally agree. Um, you know, everybody should have friends like that where you can come together, celebrate each other. You know, you grieve together. It, it's just beautifully written, all of these characters. Um, and I can't wait. Like, is anybody going to... Has Has anybody read getting what is it getting to happy or getting back to happy the second book i'm definitely um going to be reading that because i just love these characters so i'd love to see more and see how how their lives progress but um yeah i just feel like there was yeah i plan to too hopefully by the end of this year and i said the, the same thing about napoli ever after and i still am slacking but that's like 10 books <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I think if you guys had to choose a character that you most related to, who would it be in the book? I think Bernadine for me, hands down. Two kids, divorced, how Stella got her groove back. I think that's me or who I could closely relate to. Jotting down if you could relate to a character the most. Um, Savannah was different too. I felt bad for her because there were so many situations in the book where you felt like, okay, she's going to have that winning moment where she's got this guy and he's so great and she meets him at a work conference and she's like, this is just unreal. We're spending so much time together. And then she gets back and he just goes ghost on her poor thing times two everybody says Bernadine yeah you have a sister like each of these characters for sure for sure when I was younger Robin now Bernadine Robin was definitely a character let me tell you though Layla Rashawn's body in in <laughs> the movie sick I've never looked like that in life ever <laughs> I've been Robin before without, yeah, promiscuity. Promiscuous, yes, but refusing to see jackasses for what they really are. Hell, and that's still till today. Like, <laughs> they still exist. The game just got harder. I don't know. And, you know, I think dating, it's similar, but it's it's more difficult, in my opinion, today because you know, you have social media. So there's so many other um, factors and things that, you know, make it easier for people to cheat and, you know, be exposed to other people and other distractions and things like that. Bernadine's strength is in us all, but I can relate to Savannah. Yeah. I thought I wanted Savannah to win so bad. And I thought when she met that guy at that work conference that that was going to be it. Like, you know, they were going to keep in touch and then she's trying to reach out to him and that dude was just ghost. I felt so bad for her. And I honestly don't think that... So really, the only two people that ended up in a relationship were Bernadine and Gloria, right? Because Robin was pregnant with Russell's baby, but was keeping... Kicked him to the curb and was keeping the baby. And then Savannah didn't have anybody either, right? From what I can remember. Yeah, I can't. So we had two out of four that had a happily ever after. I think I was happy to see Bernadine get it. Um, She's the one, if I had to pick one that, that got the happily ever after, it would be her for me because I felt like she went through, I don't know though, Robin kind of went through some stuff too, minus the marriage aspect of it. Like the three dudes she was dealing with, but Robin, and that's a lot of, uh, with a lot of us in dating, like we get stuck inside this box where we have a certain type and we want to stick to that type and that type can be so dangerous for us. Like, 
just no good. Yeah, I, that's something I'm having to learn is to be patient and kind of step outside my box, not stick to my type necessarily. Bernadine on so many levels. Yeah, Doralis, I know you can relate to a lot with Bernadine. Ooh, good question. What advice would I offer to each of the women? Robin, just don't date. <laughs> Period. Just stop dating. I think Robin I think Robin just kinda needs to slow down. Focus on everything else that she has going on in her life. I think she just needs to have a seat. And uh great question, Anna. Um yeah, I think she, she needs to just not date. Um at this point, obviously focus on your child. Um if I was Savannah, Savannah's a hard one. Savannah's a hard one because Man, I thought she had a good one and he went ghost on her. Um, for Savannah, I think I would just tell her to continue to be patient and not let the pressures of her mom and the rest of her family pressure her, her into jumping into a relationship with someone who isn't meant for her. Um, yeah, Robin definitely needs to sit still. Um, if it was Bernadine, I think Bernadine and Gloria I can kind of give the same message, which is to be willing to trust again. Um, because they both kind of have issues with trust um, in men. So I think that I would just tell them to be trusting. I mean, still have your eyes wide open, but but to allow yourself to trust and be loved again. Um, I think that's the biggest one is just to open your heart and be trusting. That was a great question. Yeah, all I got for Robin is have several seats. But, you know, at the end of the day, she got her baby. Although, not sure I'd be pretty proud of that it was with Russell, who has a whole wife at home. Scary. Scary, scary, scary. Any favorite parts um, of the book that you guys remember? I think the garage sale and the burning of the car was a favorite of mine. That scene. Angela Bassett has that cigarette. She just out there smoking it, looking at that car, just drop that match. <laughs> and that car just lights up. Dorla said, we want the excitement that those types of guys bring, but we are really looking for stability too. Yep. And honestly, like when I look at my type and, <clears throat> well, let me say this, as a person who wasn't really healed post-divorce, and the guys that I dated closer to that time period or just after that time period were no good for me. Um, they they did not have my best interests in heart. They weren't truly about me. It was more so like, we're just gonna kick it and have a good time, but I'm not trying to be serious kind of thing. And I, I had these blinders on. I mean, especially when you've been with somebody for nine years. And I mean, my whole adult life from college until, you know, I was damn near 29 years old, I was with the same person. So I never really dated in, in an, my adult life, you know, so I had never like really dealt with womanizers and different types of guys like that to really know what I was getting myself into. So as a newly single divorced woman, I was very naive as to what is out there, the games that are being run. I was too trusting. I'm very trusting as a person. Um, but now I can kind of see through that, through growth. Like consistency is number one. Um, you can talk to talk, but if your actions aren't aligning with that, then bro, we, we, we have nothing to talk about here. Um, for me, you know, you can say that you're all into me, but it's like, you know, if I'm not hearing for you from a for a couple of days, you're not texting me, good morning, like I'm not on your mind, like I can I can see through it now. Like that. Yeah, I can see through it. Let's see. Um Erica, you said with all all the remakes, do you think it will ever be a remake of it Are you talking about waiting to excel if there will ever be a remake of the movie i hope not 
<laughs> I hope not because I can't imagine in my mind right now I can't see and I mean I think the other players probably I mean the other players the other characters can probably be replaced and and done a decent job but I can't picture not one person playing Bernadine like Angela Bassett did if y'all can go ahead and, and drop it down there because I'd love to you know rethink that but I, I just don't see when I pictured that person that character I don't see anybody else but Angela Bassett playing that and that's just for me I hope they don't remake it because it's like you're gonna go back and like do redo Love Jones and the best man and stuff like that just just leave our classics alone <laughs> only person I'm letting have remakes is um Disney and right now that's kind of questionable um, cause that Lion King, if I'm being honest, the cartoon is better, but that's just me. Uh, which one of the four women would you consider the most self-confident because they all had their own issues? Um, probably Bernadine still. Bernadine for me, because she wasn't concerned about being in a relationship. So her bounce back was just like, I'm about to have fun. Like you remember when the scene, when they're all in the nightclub and she sees that old friend, which is the married guy, Hubert or whatever his name is. And she's just in the club dancing and all the other girls are just kind of sitting there. Robin's salty because Michael's behind her dancing with some chick that, you know, they, we just broke up a week ago and he's already out with another chick. I think Bernadine for me is the most confident um of all of them even considering what she was going through she still was herself you know was able to go out have a good time and not not worry about what anybody thought of her she was gonna have fun she didn't she didn't ever question herself as a person I don't I don't think that not that I can recall I don't remember her questioning herself as to whether she was good enough or anything like that have you ever read any, have you read any other books by Terry McMillan? I have not, but if y'all have suggestions, send them my way because this is a first and, um, nope, you haven't missed anything. I mean, we're just, we're just talking. Um, we're talking about, for those that are jumping on, we, uh, this was our July book of the month, which was Waiting to Exhale by Terry McMillan. So we are talking about that, comparing it to the movie, talking about men um sorry the letters of my shirt are kind of on instagram i can't read y'all's comments so that's why you'll see me moving around like crazy um jamie said exactly don't touch love jones yeah there's just some classics you just don't need to touch yes i love bernadine yep um let's see oh look at y'all preach sister <laughs> uh okay let's see healing has to be first for all of us before we start dating um i've been divorced for six years now and i don't think i was truly healed until end of 2017 around the time when i started book girl magic i think that's the time that i was really like able to do some work and really heal myself and get over issues and cut ties like i think i was um I like the familiar and even though people tend to be toxic and and um, not good for me I'd like to hold on to things just because you know you have 22 years invested in friendships and things like that and you so badly want to hold on to those things but you have to learn to like let shit go and the more that I let shit go it, it becomes a process of me healing and growing as a person um, and honestly I've been tested where I've let long-term relationship friendships and stuff go and these people would try to come back into my life I'd be tested like they'd come back into my life send me messages you know try to just poke and prod and work their way back into my life and every time that I ignored it over the past two years I've been blessed with something for book girl magic that week um something that as as someone coming to um, offer me a podcast or, you know, uh, to be a guest on their podcast or something like, you know, a publisher wanting to be a partner with me, something, just something has always happened where I've been affirmed that I'm making the right decision by not letting these people back in my life. So it's been pretty cool, but I think it takes a lot of growth and healing for you to get to that point where you can just, you're toxic for me. Why am I keeping you in my life? I like my little bubble and I like being at peace. So if you ain't about that life, see ya. Sorry, I'm on a rant. <laughs> Stepped away from my phone, but the cartoon was so better. Yes, so back to Lion King. Not that the movie, the real movie was bad, but there's just some parts for me. I mean, I love like lines and I love reciting lines and things like that. So when you 
mess with that and you take out some of the funny parts, like, you, that ruins it for me. I said the same, yes. How Stella Got Her Groove Back was good. I could not get into her other books after that, but that's just me. Um, I'm considering, someone said Disappearing Acts was good. Good to know. Um, as y'all know, we have a retreat um, in Jamaica that is in April. I think April 20th or something like that, 2020. Um, and so we'll be going to Montego Bay. And so I'm trying to look for a book um about Jamaica or by a Jamaican author so I'm I'm going back and forth if I want to let it be how Stella got her groove back so um we'll see I'll come back to that and see what happens but yeah um I think one of the biggest lessons with all these ladies is healing and I think Robin was the biggest example of someone who did not do that and she would just bounce from man to man in toxic situations toxic situation and she just she couldn't ever see straight or see things for what it, what they were because she was not healed and she was just going through you know one bad situation after another the men are solely known through the women's point of view how do you feel about that where are you pulling these questions from Anna look <laughs> I was like she got some good questions she must have she must have a list of questions down there for me I like it though um you know what I didn't mind it because it gives women a voice a lot of times especially as black women we don't have a voice so um i love the fact that they were able to tell their stories through their their you know with their own voices um for me and this is just me speaking from experience i am the bernadine um my divorce was was told I didn't I didn't speak on it I didn't speak I don't speak on the things that happen to me on a daily basis I don't speak on um the things my ex-husband did to me a lot of people have no idea they just know that I'm divorced they have no idea the truth of the story unless you know I choose to talk about it. it's not a secret but I tend to keep things to myself so really if people don't know about my story unless it was told by the other side which isn't necessarily the truth I was made to be the bad guy so yeah I, I like that the women look honest in my brain I love the questions keep them coming they're good they're great questions um but I think that I love that women the women of this book had a voice um I love that they weren't cookie cutter I love that they curse um I love that they curse at each other. I love how real their friendship is, that they could just banter and be themselves and, and not, you know, not give a damn and just love each other as is. No, um, no trying to, you know, sugarcoat who they are. They just could be themselves. Oh, no need to be sorry. Trust me. I am, I am far blessed. Um... And I don't think the other half can say the same. And, you know, I know that sounds awful, but, you know, um, what's done in the dark eventually comes to light. Um, you reap what you sow. Karma is a bitch. Um, so I can just say that there's nothing that I needed to do on my end. What goes around comes around and, and God has had my back. Uh, no doubt about that one. Back to LK, it was good. Oh, look, everybody's talking about Lion King. My bad, I got everybody on this Lion King train. Uh, Lion King was good, but the realness seemed scary for the kids. <laughs> it was very real. Um, but I miss the comedy. I miss some parts with the hyenas. I love some of my, you know, Mufasa. I miss some of my lines, and that those were the best parts for me, so... But uh, yeah, I, I loved that this was told the way it was told without without um, giving the men a voice because sometimes men or people have a way of minimizing our pain, our hurt, our voices. Um, so I love books like this that really give us a voice. Let's see, the friendship between these women was beautiful. They were like sisters. I do. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, it's about having each other's back through thick and thin, telling you straight up when you're wrong. Um, I love the, the, the bond that they have with one another. And uh, yeah, it was such a beautiful thing. 
I really, really love this book. Um, yeah, definitely a, a thing where the book was... I, and I thought the movie was good. I thought the movie was great. Again, it's one of my favorites. But when I read the book and got more detail and kind of more of a backstory of each of the characters, it 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 definitely um, became a favorite of mine. So good stuff. Any other thoughts, comments, questions that you guys have for me or about the book? Yeah, Sisterhood's very cool. I love the bond that they have. Um, yeah. I loved it too. It was, it's in my list of favorites. Reading that book inspired me to write. Yep. Um, I want to write a book kind of like this with a sisterhood in there. Um, but based a lot on my own life. So it'll be a fiction novel when I eventually sit down and do write it. Um, but a lot of my truth will be it within the book. So I think that'll be kind of cool for people to read to kind of figure out, did this really happen? Did it not happen? Yeah, we talked about Toni Morrison when we first came on here. That was extremely sad. Um, but I definitely plan to incorporate um, some of her works into our 2020 um, lineup. Not sure when. Maybe February, since her birthday is the 18th. <laughs> He's laughing at me over here. Yeah. I think Sula's next on my list. I'm going to try to read that for um, September. I've already got August lined up, but um, I think September is going to get back on my path of reading Toni Morrison. So sad. I wanted to to cry all day today like it was just tough my mood was just blah today because it was sad I just yeah read mine in October what's yours yeah the loss of, of Toni Morrison was a huge one for so many of us um you know and i saw today i think that she has another she had a book that came out in february of this year a sense of self-regard or something like that but i saw that she has another one that um is supposed to come out I don't know. I saw if anybody can confirm that, but I was looking at a list of Toni Morrison's books and I saw that she has another one that's supposed to come out this year. I'm looking it up right now. Tell me what you guys, yeah, she was working on another and that's, yeah. I wonder if it's done. And if anybody, um, I was just about to say something. Da, da, da. I lost my train of thought. Oh, tell me what you guys are reading before we get off. And if you have any last minute thoughts on waiting to exhale, let me know. But I'd love to know what you guys are reading right now. I've honestly never seen the movie Beloved. Um, and I refuse to watch it until I read the books. But I'm trying to read Tony in chronological order. So I'm not going to be able to read that until... Uh, or watch that until it comes out. Damn, when I had this earlier today, all of her books, it came up. So The Bluest Eye, Sula, then Song of Solomon. I feel like there's another one before Beloved. Beloved was 1987, so... Oh, Tar Baby. So, Song of Solomon, then Tar Baby, then Beloved. 
Then Jazz. Paradise. I mean, she's got some other books in between that. And did y'all know that she wrote children's books? I forgot who told me that. If it was Reggie Reed's. Um... Yeah. I just read The Love Prison Made and Unmade. Yeah, I've heard. Someone said that was a good good read. I just finished Binti. What were your thoughts on Binti? Because I've got some opinions on that one. Um, Patsy just came in the mail waiting for Black Girls Must Die Exhausted. When you read uh, Black Girls Must Die Exhausted, go to our YouTube page. Um, you can find... I did a... Our April book of the month chat I did with um, Jane Allen. So we talk about Black Girls Must Die Exhausted and Queenie. Ebony Roberts. Yeah, I saw that book not the other day. Let's see. Yes, The Source of Self-Regard. That is what it's called. Um, Native Son by Richard Wright. That's a good one. Finishing up Fly Girl. Yeah, I'm actually going to sit down and start <laughs> back reading that. I hope to be done with it by the end of the week so that the little group of people that we have from the last chat um, that decided to read Fly Girl together can discuss it next week. Yeah, I got to move. I have the source of self-regard. It was sent to me by a publisher and I, I have it up there to read. Um, but I think I want to go through some of her other works before. Um, maybe the source of self-regard might be a book club read I don't know I have to I don't know how I'm gonna pick which Toni Morrison book we're gonna read as a book club maybe that month I will do a vote um and let everybody pick it won't be until next year because I've got our stuff already lined up but maybe in February I will do a vote and a poll and let you guys pick which Toni Morrison book we read I've jumped back on my year how do you say that? Danticat? Danticat? And halfway through Anacoana? Golden Flower? I can't even pronounce that. Just got One Night in Georgia on Audible. Hope is the full book. It should be. Um, one Night in Georgia, surprisingly, will actually be one of our book club reads this fall. So I'm excited for that. Especially since I am a I can't really say I'm a Georgia girl, but I was I was raised here. I wasn't born here. Um, oh, the book is on. Oh no, I just found it. Mouthful of Blood. That was supposed to be coming out in 2019 this year from Toni Morrison. So that should be interesting. But yeah, um, Toni Morrison has a ton of children's books. So I'm going to have to check that out, too, and get them for my little ones. Um, and see. I could not get through the for the first time I had to watch Beloved, then go back and read it again and could understand it better. Have you have I read American Marriage? Yes, American Marriage was actually a book club pick for us last year. I think we read it in March of last year. It was a great conversation um starter. American Marriage is, is one of my favorites. Um we will be seeing Tayari again very soon in the book club so I am excited for that we've got some good reads lined up which is why I would love to incorporate Tony ASAP but I just feel like we have such a good lineup for fall coming up um I think Anna and I are doing a collaboration in December on a read but I'm thinking maybe Anna and I can get together and do some Tony Morrison um at some point so we'll see I would love to partner with her again cool beans you guys are awesome thank you so much for coming on tonight um this read was an awesome one for me I love you know and I'm, I'm surprised because I hate seeing movies like before I read the book because it's hard like with the Twilight Saga I watched the first two movies before I read all all of the books and the first two books were so hard to get through because I it, they're long and I knew what was happening but I didn't feel that way with Waiting to Exhale because I felt like the movie you know gets bits and pieces but there's really so much more depth to these characters than what's explained in the movie so I felt like I was engrossed in the book. Really? 
Anna just said the mouthful of blood is the UK title for the source of self-regard. Really? Well, there goes my hopes of Toni Morrison coming out with <laughs> another book. That is crazy. Wow. It's kind of a bold title. Like, I guess in UK, in the UK, they just... Wow. That's really shocking. Yeah, wow is right. That's all I can say right now. Mm -mm. Haven't read Getting to Happy yet, but it's on my list. Yeah, I'm... I do like that title better because I feel like it's a little more raw. Like, the UK, they... they they don't hold back over there, man. We need to start getting like them. Yes, the book Waiting to Exhale is much more than the movie. Definitely. Definitely got way more out of it in the characters. Like, I was just surprised at how promiscuous Robin was. Like, that. I think most of the other characters were pretty much who they were in the movie. But Robin, they was holding back in the movie on her. Because she was something else. And she was a lot more insecure than they gave her credit for Yes, uh, getting back, getting to happy or getting back to happy, getting to happy is the second book. It is the sequel to Waiting to Exhale. Definitely. Yeah. You gals are awesome. Thank you for coming on tonight. Um, you know, I have to make sure I'm on time because you all know how, uh, Instagram likes to do me and cut me off right at an hour. But um, if you are reading with us in August, our book is The Travelers by Regina Porter. So I am super excited about this one. Um, oh, wow. This is the first time I've actually opened it. There's like pictures and stuff in here. Yeah. I have no I've heard great things um so I'm excited to read this it kind of follows two families um and how their lives intertwine from the 1950s through the Obama uh, through Obama's first year of presidency so um yeah I'm interested to see what this is all about probably gonna do this one as an audiobook audiobooks are life for me lately I don't have time to read y'all no problem, Shoshana. She said, thanks for the platform, Renee. Thank you for being a part of this. It would be nothing without you guys. So I can't thank you guys enough for spending your evening with me. He said Robin was a full-blown mess, wasn't she? She was a hot damn mess, as I would like to call her. Um, Yeah, she needed to get her whole life together. But uh, anyways, that's it for me. Thank y'all for joining. I hope you guys have a great evening and I will see you guys in a month. Bye.